hello from my new office and my hideous lampshade um but no it's fine the lampshade was the landlord's daughters and it will be coming down as soon as i can get a replacement for it but seeing as i've only been here for less than a week i need a little bit more time so we're just gonna have to live with the lovely lampshade for now and the funky wallpaper which i quite like so i'm keeping the wallpaper um today i wanted to talk to you about how to inject an element of storytelling into your imagery because when i figured this out it was like a light bulb went off in my head and everything changed um so to give you a bit of backstory around this time last year maybe a little bit more than a year ago i went to see a photography consultant called zoe wishaw who is based in london and she is fantastic if anyone is looking to hire someone um, as a consultant or a mentor or something. Um, she and I sat down and looked through my portfolio and it was most one of the most incredible things I've ever done. Um, and one of the main things that she explained to me was that I was lacking a certain element that was drawing all my imagery together and giving it a bit of purpose. And that kind of missing puzzle piece was story. And I hadn't really, this hadn't clicked like for a long time. I knew something was not quite working in what I was doing. I knew that there was something missing in my imagery, but I couldn't figure out what it was. And there was something about the way that she explained it to me that I suddenly went, oh, I am not telling stories in my photos. So, I went on a mission and really sat down and figured out how am I going to tell my stories through my imagery and everything from that moment shifted and my work has definitely improved massively since doing this. So why, why first of all is storytelling so important? Storytelling adds an emotion to an image that means that people who are looking at it feel more connected to it. Um, the image can suddenly evoke some kind of emotion or some kind of attachment because it has a story element to it. You always want your viewer of your images to feel something. It doesn't have to be positive all the time. It can be negative. It can be whatever you want them to feel. But the point is that viewers should feel something. And if you look at some of my older work, it's very obvious that there wasn't really anything that anyone was feeling. They might think, wow, yeah, pretty picture, or wow, beautiful model, but that was kind of it. So this really does change things if you can figure it out. The other thing that storytelling does is make your imagery far more memorable. When you have a story, and this is, this is the same with your writing, with anything that you do, if you can tell stories, people will remember stories far more than they'll remember anything else. Um, think about like when you try to explain something to someone, you want to tell them a story. It's the same with your imagery. Um, you want people to be able to look at a photo and remember it as much as possible, which in this day and age is really difficult because we are bombarded with so much imagery, so much more than we used to be. Um, the other reason storytelling is super important is that brands are looking to sell clothes and therefore when you tell a story that is connecting people to an image and people are more likely to remember it, the brand is more likely to gain traction and sell more clothing as a result. So if you can help a brand sell more clothes through your imagery because you're a good storyteller, you're onto a winning formula. They will love you. Brands want to sell more clothes. That is their ultimate goal all the time, no matter what. So if your imagery can help them do that, win a, win a formula. Um, and the last point, I've got notes if you're wondering why I'm looking over here. The last point about why storytelling is so important is that it will massively help you when you come to pitch your ideas for shoots to either brands or magazines. 
Um, if you share just a mood board with a brand or a magazine and sort of say, I want to shoot this, but don't really have some kind of purpose to it or any kind of story behind what you're trying to say, they're going to have a harder time connecting to the idea and therefore a harder time commissioning you. If you can share a story behind why you're shooting this editorial or why you're wanting to work with this brand, they are more likely to go ahead with that and want to work with you on that story to pr help you produce it. So that's kind of the why. Let's look at now how. How do you actually inject story into your imagery? And this can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. I prefer to keep it fairly straightforward and fairly simple. And this is what I mean by it's so easy to do and it can really change things for you. So that's why I'm pushing this so hard for you. Um, I like to come up with a literal story in my head and I write it down. Um, I like to let my imagination just completely run wild. Um, and everyone will have different ways of coming up with their stories, but here's some of the ways that I've actually come up with my own. So I wrote down a list. I have had ideas for shoots and stories through reading books, so reading fiction books. Um, movies or series I've watched, I shot an editorial last year based on the TV series Outlander, which was a story about, well, if you've seen Outlander, you know it's fantastic. I'm not gonna go over that now. Um, I've had ideas for stories come up in nature when I've just been out walking. That tends to be where I get most of my ideas for stories. And when I say like walking in nature, so for example, one of the things I had yesterday was I was walking in um, by, the, by the river near where I now live, and there are all these narrow boats along the river. And the first thing that came to my head was a story about a woman who lives on a narrow boat. It's really that simple. It doesn't have to be anything like super complicated with this whole big chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. It can just be coming up with some kind of concept about a woman who lives on a narrow boat. And from that point onward, how do I then break that down into images? Well, I can first of all go and do research on women who live on narrow boats and actually look at imagery of people who do live in that situation. And I can also look at the kind of inspiration for the clothing around that. And then I would come up with an actual storyboard of telling that story. So it might be, I'm literally t sending you this off the top of my head, but you know, it might be a shot of a woman driving a narrow boat along a river. It might be a shot of a woman sitting on a narrow boat by a stream. Um, it might be a shot of a woman pulling the narrow boat into the anchorage or the um, mooring. That's a better word. My boyfriend would kill me if I called it an anchor because it wouldn't be anchored. Um, so those that you know, those are the kind of things. What are the elements that you need to portray in an editorial about a woman on a narrow boat that would tell that story? So I like to break it down like that. Other ideas are um, that I've had and found stories from is childhood memories. Um, I did a shoot last summer about a, an artist and I based that idea off of the stories I used to tell myself as a child of what the dreamiest idea for life looked like. And in my head, as a five-year-old, my dream life was going and painting landscapes. I thought that was the most romantic idea ever. So I based an editorial off of that story I had in my head as a child. Um, and what that would look like, you know, what would that artist go and do? What would she be having in her hand? What actions would she be taking? What would she, what would she actually be doing when she was going out to paint the landscape? Um, I've also based stories on uh, current experiences, so things I'm going through at the moment. Um, current events, those are ideas. I don't, haven't necessarily done that myself, but you could base a story on something that's happening right now in the world. There's a lot happening in the world right now. So if you feel inspired by that, I personally don't. But if you do, maybe you can tell a story through imagery about current events. Um, and you can also come up with ideas with friends. Um, this, the editorial that I came out with most recently, The Art of Distance, was a story based on the fact that we can't work with makeup artists or we couldn't work with makeup artists um, in the way we normally do until last weekend. And um, so we created an idea of a story of um, 
a makeup artist painting, <laughs> physically painting a model with a two meter long pole. So that was that story. Um, the whole point of this is the stories can be as long or as short as you want them to be. Um, they can be really simple or they can be really complicated. If you read the blog post that I published on Monday, which is all about this, so if you prefer reading than watching video, you might want to go and read that. But I included in that blog post some snippets of actual lines and paragraphs that I've written in photo shoot plans that I have made. So you can go and read the actual lines and the words I use to tell my stories. And if you look at that blog post, you will see that some of them are super simple. Like they're one line. I think I wrote down one of them here. Yeah, one of them is a female painter heads out to paint a landscape which inspires her. That's it. But that gives me enough to work from to then mood board, you know, the actual storyline to go and draw because I like to draw out my ideas physically just like, you know, dummy stick men. It's not nothing fancy. Um, and the other one is um, a local surfer rebels against traditional laid back surfer girl looks and goes full on glamour. Again, it's one line, but it gives me enough of a story to then start imagining, okay, if a local surf girl was rebelling against the surf girl look, what would she look like and what would she be doing? And that was what led me to the editorial that I did um, for Mode Magazine China, which was the um, surf girl one, which if you go on my profile, you'll be able to see the images of. And it's also what I used in the blog posts, like banner image. So that is kind of, in a nutshell, how to inject story into your imagery and why you should be doing it and how it can benefit you and your career. I promise that when you start doing this, when you start actually coming up with storylines for your work, your work will elevate massively because it will suddenly have a purpose and it will suddenly have much more sense to it and you will have something to work through and work based off of when you're coming up with your ideas. So if you have any questions, I know there's a couple of you here right now, I'm here so I might as well take some time to answer some of them. Um, if you don't, that's also fine. Um, I'm going to quickly tell you about the new pitching template which I released last week. Um, it's the t pitching template that you can download entirely for free and it will help you have find the words to say to pitch yourself to brands to magazines and it's exactly what I use. Um, it's entirely free. If you click the link in my profile you will see a little button that says free email pitching template. You just literally put your email address and you get sent it and that's it. Um, and that is exactly what I use to pitch myself. It is everything I think you need to know what to say. Um, I've, I've even included different lines for different things depending on the circumstances or depending on what you're pitching. So I hope it helps. I used to have one that I recently, well this is one that I've basically redone because my old one was old. <laughs> um, question from a Aya Photography. How do you go from writing the story to actually physically creating that on a shoot? Um, it's, it's just basically, I literally sit down, I write that one line and then I go on to Pinterest and I start thinking to myself, what imagery do I want to see to sort of tell this story? So I, I tend to go on Pinterest and I love to look at old imagery. I'm very inspired by history. So I look at, um, you know, I, if I was going back to the narrowboat example, what would a um, old, older, like in history, what would a narrowboat woman have looked like? What would she have worn? What are the actions she would have taken? And I use that to then map out the shoot. So I might even take some of the physical actions I see in some of those historic images and use them. Oh, sorry, door slammed. My dog might bark now. Um, use that as historic imagery to inspire myself off of poses for example that i could use with the model um the other thing is i literally i will draw out based on that story i will think to myself okay how, if i want to tell this story of someone living on a narrow boat what are eight images that would sum it up so i might have an image of like i said and i'll draw this out i literally will get a pen and paper or on my ipad and draw out 
um, a photo of a narrow boat with a woman standing on it with a tiller sort of steering and then I would have maybe a shot of a woman on the narrow but standing next to the narrow boat on the land maybe if I really was gonna get super interested and I, w I would love to do this is get a horse to draw and pull the narrow boat along because that's what they used to do I mean that would be the dream oh my god watch this space I might do that um, and that's basically it um, if if you want to get super serious like you can um, really go to town and write a full story. I did a shoot last year where I um, I was asked to shoot an editorial in a location house and they wanted it to be kind of wedding-y but not. So I actually wrote down a story and you can also read this on the blog post. So it's basically a paragraph just saying about how you know the story is about a woman who um, elopes to the countryside with her fiance and she you know is rebelling against the Chelsea upbringing she was brought up to in London she wants to be outside she wants to be outdoors um, yeah that, that can't remember it off the top of my head but you get an idea I would actually write down stories maybe a one line isn't enough for all of you maybe you need to go more in depth just write a story just go just like literally have fun with it let your imagination run wild don't overthink it don't judge yourself just write and see what happens and what comes out if you don't like it you can scrap it and get go back to the drawing board later you can also ask your team for inspiration i like to approach my makeup artist my hairstylist and so sort of say to them this is kind of the idea i have what kind of story could we tell based off of this idea and they will come up with ideas with you as well so definitely approach your team and ask for help as well um, how do you get your model into character I just tell the model the story. Um, literally, Michelle, that is all I do. I will show them a mood board and I will tell them the story of the person they are portraying. And then they tend to just get it automatically, especially if you show them imagery of what you're trying to get them to achieve. Um, if they don't, the fact that I have spent the time thinking of the story, planning each shot out, means I can just literally tell them what to do. Even if they're not the good, the best actress in the world, they find it very difficult to get into character. Um, I did a shoot that's not out yet a while ago, um, and the model was fantastic and didn't need that much help. But the fact that I had literally storyboarded and drawn out, with stick men, <laughs> The whole editorial meant that we did it A, really quickly because I knew exactly what I was shooting and B, she knew exactly what to do because I could say to her, now I want you to hold your breath and go underwater. That was it. Um, so she did that and then she came up and that was the shot. Um, so I hope that makes sense about getting the model into character. If anyone has any more questions, let me know. I'm here for a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, I hope that's been really helpful. This is something that completely changed my world. So um, I hope it helps you guys as well. I'm gonna wait for one more minute and then I'm gonna go because it doesn't look like as many questions. I will do another live next week where I will be doing either another topic or I'll just do a general Q&A. Um, there'll also be a new podcast episode out next week and of course a blog post on Monday. So there's always new content that I am here to share with you. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you so much for watching and, oh, I've literally just got a question. <laughs> I just, okay, I'll answer this one and then I'll go. Um, when the stylist takes control of the shoot, how do you take the control back? Uh, I've never really had a stylist take control of the shoot. Um, not work with that stylist again? <laughs> um, I guess the thing that you could do is, um, Taking back control of a shoot. I'm the worst for this, but I just don't work with people who take control over shoots. Um, so yeah, I would just maybe go back to the mood board always. Just be, pull out the mood board, say, you know, I'm not sure that's working. Um, try and just be vocal about your ideas. Um, don't necessarily discount people's ideas if they're approaching you with ideas. Always listen to other team members' ideas because it's important that they feel heard and listened to. Um, but you don't have to do everything that everyone tells you to do all the time. Um, 
And yeah, I'm gonna leave it there because that's a million questions and I'm, it's gonna start going off the different topics and I don't want to, I wanna keep this focused on this. So I will do another Q&A next week. So I hope to see you then and I will speak to you all very soon. Thank you so much for coming.